Hello, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the sequence of events that have taken place to produce the basin and range landscape, and also identify different features of that landscape. So this is what the basin and range looks like if you ever go there, and you definitely should go there because it's awesome. You can see that there is a big basin here in the middle of this view, and then off to the right there's a range, off to the left there's a range, and even in the foreground here we've got a small range. And you can see cutting across that foreground that there's some drainage. So there's both tectonic causes to this landscape, and also there are effects from weathering, erosion, and deposition of sediment. The Basin and Range is located in the American West, and you can see its distribution here on this map. Basically what's happened here is that tectonic extension has produced a series of north-south trending normal faults, and those have broken the, the crust up into a bunch of different little fragments. So these faults are normal faults, they're shown here in the cross-sectional view, and that breaks the landscape up. Notice that the blocks of crust that have dropped down relative to their neighbors have produced these basins, and the pieces of crust that are poking up into the sky are the new ranges. Now, as erosion goes to work on the ranges and transports sediment downhill into the basins, we get a couple of different features. Prominent are the alluvial fans. These are basically big piles of sediment that are produced where the canyons draining the mountains end up meeting the valley floor. If there are particularly low spots, may accumulate water, and that is present in the form of these playa lakes that you see here. If you let the landscape continue to evolve, the alluvial fans may coalesce to produce continuous aprons of sediment that basically drape the connection between the ranges and the basins. Those are called bajadas. And the lakes may dry up to produce these salt flats known as playas. If enough time goes by, the mountains may be reduced to little tiny nubbins, and they may poke up just barely through this sea of sediment. So those little nubbins that are poking up are called inselbergs. Let's take a look at some examples here. Here's a salt flat. This is the Bonneville salt flats in Utah. Here's an example of an alluvial fan. You can see it here leaving a range and entering a basin. Here's an example of several alluvial fans that have coalesced to form a bajada. And here's an example of an inselberg or two. So there's a prominent inselberg right here, but there's even a little one right here. Now let's take a look down on the most famous valley in the Basin and Range province, and that's Death Valley. So in this perspective, north is off towards the right side of the screen. The bottom of the screen is the east, and the top of the screen is the west. And you can see here the Panamint Range on the west and the Amargosa Range on the east, and in between is Death Valley. Notice that there's this beautiful, well-developed bajada all along the western side of Death Valley. So that's all sediment derived from the weathering of the Panamint Range. On the eastern side, you don't see a bajada. Instead, you just see isolated little alluvial fans like the ones that we looked at earlier. Okay, time for a quick quiz. How many alluvial fans can you count here? Okay, so you had a moment to think about that, and hopefully you figured out that it was a trick question. Ha ha ha. So you might have said one, two, three, four, five different alluvial fans, but because they've all coalesced together here into a continuous apron of sediment, I would say there's no alluvial fans here, and instead that this is an example of a bajada. So hopefully you got that trick. I'm sorry to be so devious, but thank you very much for your attention. This has been another smart figure.